All right, so one of the amazing things about moving to this area is that you get connected with just some amazing people. Uh, there were some, a lot of people I knew before I came here. Uh, there was some that uh, I knew of, but wasn't really sure if I'd ever get a chance to meet with them. And then I just find out that through a mutual friend that uh, he knows this guy that I've been wanting to meet. So we meet at a birthday party and now we're hanging out together. <laughs> so this is my buddy, Dave Chesson, who's, uh, you're still in the military, right? Kind of, yeah, reserves. So he's in the military, I mean, so we have that common bond, but it's so funny, I mean, that is a common bond, but yet the common bond I think that we really enjoy is uh, we both kind of geek out about SEO, online marketing, uh, and when I got to learn more about him and his business and even and his family, I mean, his family and him are amazing, and he's, he's a, a certified geek, right? I mean, yeah, sci-fi pretty, geek? Pretty much. Yep. Yeah, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but yeah, we just have a lot of commonalities, and I just want to share like his story because I think you're going to be impressed with what he has to offer, so we're going to learn more about him right now. So this is my buddy Dave Chesson, who you just met. And so I, as I mentioned, uh, if you are familiar with the YouTuber Antonio Centennial, Real Men Real Style, he was the one that actually introduced us before I moved to this area. It's like, hey, you gotta meet up with my buddy Dave. Uh, he just moved there, he's in the military. I think you guys are gonna hit it off. And we emailed back and forth. Yeah. And then it was like a month or two after I moved here, I went to a, a birthday party, a mutual friend, and then sitting around the campfire is Dave. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, wait, <laughs> we were supposed to meet. And we like, we were there. We didn't know that we were gonna be there. No, yeah, we didn't. It was just kind of coincidence. It just kind of, just coincidence. And, uh, and you see my other videos where I talk about uh, a men's mastermind group, morning group that I was in. And so Dave also was in that. We actually were invited at the same time. We got to know each other there. And it's just been awesome to, to learn his story more about him. But I know his story, you don't know his story. So that's where, why we are here right now. So first, we talked about you being in the military. So tell us about the military, how you got in the military, what you do in the military, and all that fun stuff. Well, my entire family has been in the military. And so I kind of grew up with this idea that I needed to be that person. And so I joined the military. I got into nuclear engineering on submarines, which was not my thing, <laughs> but it's the thing I chose. And then immediately I became a, uh, what they call a military diplomat, a foreign area officer. And they sent me off to Korea and there I sat without my family. And I realized this isn't the life I wanted to live. So, I mean, and you literally have like traveled the world. Yeah. Pretty much, uh, been all over the place in embassies as well as on foreign military bases. So I've gotten to see kind of the, the crazy side that most tourists don't get to see. So, I mean, just one thing, I just wanna make sure that you guys are clear. So I was in the Army National Guard, I did deployment to Iraq. Like I, that, that to me is like what I would call like, I don't know, like basic military or like more like common military. But when I think about what you've done, like what you've seen, I feel like that's like next level type stuff yeah it's been really interesting um, yeah no, most people kind of think of like you know the soldier or, you know being on a ship or so but there's a lot of things that the military does uh, just in operating in other countries and kind of you know working with other militaries and other governments for that matter all right so you're in the military I think you just alluded to this like you you like it but you kind of feel like maybe it's not for you like you're trying to figure out something else out so somewhere along the line, you became interested in search engine optimization. Like, I don't know how that even happens, but tell us about that. Like, what was it about that that intrigued you where you wanted to learn more about it? Well, I think it started with a conversation I had with my wife where she looked at where we were and she asked me this very important question. What exactly do you want to do with your current career? What is your goal? And the problem was, I didn't have one. I had nothing. I was kind of just operating, going every day, you know, from seven in the morning to 5 p.m., just showing up, doing the job they were asking. And inside, I didn't exactly feel fulfilled. And the other thing too was, was that the military kept sending me without my family. So I didn't, my kids kind of didn't know me. My wife was on the other side of the world and it was just kind of a terrible situation. So we decided that we needed to look 
for an opportunity to be able to kind of develop some type of career or some type of business that would allow me to not only get out of the military, but be home and at the same time make enough money to support my family. Now the problem about being on the other side of the world is you can't start a brick and mortar, you know, business. Open a Subway franchise. Yeah, right? Yeah. I might have done well in Korea maybe, but not so much in Sri Lanka. But the thing was, was that we just couldn't do that. And the other thing was, I didn't want to go from one nine to five job to another that would send me somewhere else. That wasn't going to be uh, success. So we started looking at this thing, online marketing, and the ability to be able to make money from anywhere in the world, so long as you had internet connection. And that's really what kicked off my interest into search engine optimization and other online tactics. What was the first thing that you did that actually generated money online? Uh, my wife went to a conference, a Danny Johnson conference, and there was somebody called Jeff Usner. I don't know if he does the online marketing thing anymore, but he had a free book that, I think the title was something pretty crazy like, how to make money online. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Earth shattering. Earth shattering, I know. <laughs> Creative. So I said, all right, I got the book. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna do everything that this book says. I'm just gonna follow it. I'm gonna, even if it feels stupid or it feels redundant or ridiculous, I'm just gonna do it. And I did. I read every page and I applied it. And here's the crazy part. It took me months to do everything it said. And in the end, I made one dollar, just one. Most people would have said, wow, what a failure. Now, like, wait, wait, is that one US dollar? Is that like Canadian, <laughs> is that Sri Lankan currency? One yen. I mean, maybe it's actually, right. never mind, sorry. No, <laughs> one US dollar, one digital dollar, right? And there it was sitting in my bank account. And <laughs> most people would have been laughing and been like, wow, what a waste. You spent months putting this together, uh, you know, and there it is, just $1. But to me, this what I think was the biggest difference maker. To me, that $1 represents success. I had created something from nothing. I was able to do it while on the other side of the world, and it didn't impact my relationship with my family. It didn't impact my current job, but that was $1 more. And I think that that was one of the biggest difference makers about who I am today. Because if I had looked at that $1 as a failure, I might have just scrapped everything. I might have been one of the people that is probably sitting out there today that says, you can't do this, that it's not real, or I'm not that person that is succeeding. I am destined to fail. But instead, that $1, to me, was proof that you could succeed. You just needed to do it again, and again, and build up and learn. I, I love that because I, I shared another video, like the, my story of how I first made uh, my first $100. But the reality behind that, like, so for me it was Google AdSense. And I remember the first time I logged into Google AdSense and saw, I don't know if it was over a dollar, it probably was like 74 cents or something, but you know, the <laughs> next day maybe it was $1.27. And I, and I remember like seeing that and how amazing that was. Uh, but for me, like, actually getting that physical check yes. from Google. And I think it was, if I, I actually found a picture of the check. I thought I lost it, I found it like an old hard drive. I think it was $152.44. But when I got that check, it took me like three months to deposit it because I'm like, ah, this is real. <laughs> and I kept getting notifications from Google saying, hey, uh, I need to set up direct deposit. And I'm like, no, because I wanted to get the check. Like I love yes. getting the envelope from Google. But like, you know, it's funny because in the grand scheme of things, like that dollar, that $100 in relation to the income that we were making, like was nothing. Nothing. It was nothing, especially for the time you know, that was put in. But like you said, like that was that initial success point that we could just celebrate and just grow from. Yeah. It's a difference maker in the mentality of the people. A lot of people would have seen that first $1, $100 as, as a waste. If you looked at the amount of hours that I probably spent making that $1, I probably was being paid like a cent an hour. <laughs> or less. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so 
most people would have scrapped it. And what I did was that project, uh, which fun part was, it was a stupid website called FreeGameNinjas.com. Wait, one more time. Say, say it one more time. Just make sure we heard that. FreeGameNinjas.com. FreeGameNinjas.com. <laughs> yeah. And it's nothing to do with anything I do right now. But, is, this, is this still live? I think Google sort of like slapped it around a okay. bit. So even that was a failure, but yeah. hey. Free game ninja, wait, okay, like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You made that first dollar. Like you said, like that gave you something to celebrate and to, to build from. Mm -hmm. So what was the next thing? If you, or I don't know if you remember the next thing, but what was like a thing after that that you remember that you did grow from? So the biggest thing was, was that I said, all right, I know that the concept can work. I just need to have, figure out how to do it better and faster. So the next time I started looking at from my mistakes, what did I do wrong in Free Game Ninjas that maybe I could fix and actually have some sort of success? And just this process, a lot of people call it failing forward. It's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to fail, especially when you first try something. But the most important part is that you learn from that and you grow and you move forward. So the next thing I did was I started looking at some of the hobbies that I enjoyed. Uh, in this case too, I also saw a lot of products that people were using and I found a lot of affiliates that were saying, hey, we would love to send free samples, would you please try it out? So I created my next <laughs> sort of not so awesome website, but it was called free samples number four you.com. Say it, well, sorry, you gotta say it again. Yeah. Free samples for you? Yep, free samples for you.com. Free samples, okay. Yeah. And samples of anything. Of anything. Uh, you could just put in your email and you get free lipstick. You know, put in your email here and you would get, but every time somebody did that, I would get maybe 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars. Okay. Yeah. And as an SEOer, so at the time, I wasn't exactly sure I wanted to be an SEOer, right? A search mm -hmm. engine optimization guy. Mm -hmm. Back then, Facebook ads was sort of a new thing, and it was back when they would put it in the like the sidebar, you know, yeah. not in the feed. But, and I started doing these Facebook ads for it, just kind of testing out a new traffic tactic, okay? And I was getting a lot of clicks because turns out people were like, sweet, free stuff, click. But I sort of felt, shall we say, a bit mm, grimy doing that sort of tactic where I was, paying to get people to, you know, click, sign up, put in their email address, maybe get the uh, lipstick. I hadn't checked. But in truth, I didn't feel as though I was making the internet a better place. I don't, I couldn't look at what I was creating and feel strong about it. So that's when I decided that I needed to, again, change. Now, I'll tell you this though, I had moved from $1 to $17. That's a 17 times ROI, thank you very much. <laughs> And again, another moment where, to me, it was a fail-forward moment, but I was proving that this time I was 17 times better. How long this time frame is a dollar to 17? Ooh, I think that was maybe three months. <laughs> I'm getting there. Like, but... I mean, just like put this in context. I think everybody that I talked to that tried doing something online, it doesn't have to be online, but they tried something and it didn't work, or they, they said it didn't work or believed it didn't work, I mean, we're talking a dollar, growing it to seventeen dollars in ninety days. Yeah. Of <laughs> and like, and you're working that entire time. I mean, you're trying to like figure this thing out. That's right. I, just think about the mindset that one has to have to continue to push through to do that. Um, I love it. All right. So seventeen times ROI. I love to do seventeen <laughs> times now. Yes. In three months. Yes. All right. So. Next, where, where are we at now? Next, next thing. So after that, I started to really see that I enjoyed the search engine optimization aspect. The thing about Facebook I, that I didn't like was I had to pay to actually get people there. Whereas with search engine optimization, I could use that information, find what information people wanted to know, and provide. And for me, that felt like I was actually making the internet a better place. That felt like I was improving the lives of people because I was able to answer their questions. And so this really got me started and I started creating these niche websites that were focused on answering questions and providing for people. And from there, each step up just started making more and more money. 
Mm -hmm. And when I started to own what I call that internet real estate, where my websites are showing up at the top of Google, getting a certain number of people every month, then I started looking at how can I provide products for them? And at that point, it really just became the business that it is today. That's awesome. So, and there was a time, I think you're, I remember you saying that, you know, you made, I guess what time, what, what point in time did you start making enough to where like, wow, this, this, this can be a full-time thing? You know, I, I think the moment was when I started writing books on Kindle. And I was pairing that with my niche websites. And I got my first Amazon check and it was $1,700, which was like the biggest online check I had ever gotten. I think at the time I was that's making- a, And that's a 10, 10X ROI from the $17? Yeah, and that was, that was a one year later, but still <laughs> though. But the thing was, was that all of the websites I was creating, they were like assets. It, it was like, this one was making $200 a month, this one was making 300. So now it was like every month I was making 500. And you yeah. could keep adding them up. And my goal ultimately was to make $10,000 a month so that I could leave the military and be home. Because like we said at the beginning, I wanted to find an opportunity that would allow me to be home with my kids, but make enough to be able to support them. Dude, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, and like we even really talked about, I mean, we talked about free ninjas, <laughs> free ninja games, whatever, and free, samples, free samples, lipstick. Um, when, I, <laughs> when I first got introduced today, so it was Kindlepreneur. Uh, like it was like your main thing and I and I thought that was I guess it is kind of well I don't know if it's your main thing I don't know if you would say that's your main thing but but then I realized like wow you have a lot of other as you said uh, internet internet uh, real estate out there from there like you have software that you've created and you have new software that's coming out I mean that's the thing with him that I've been most impressed with was it wasn't just a blog with great content you know, he was able to discover needs uh, that people had in the book publishing space and created software to help out with that. Um, it, can you just talk about maybe just Kindlepreneur a little bit and like what that is and like kind of the first uh, uh, product that came out of that? I mean, that might be actually an, an entire video in itself, but just like a quick uh, overview on what that looks like. Yeah. So at one point I decided that I wanted to start making a website where I was truly putting myself into it. Now before those niche websites, it was more, here's the information, enjoy it, move on. With Kindlepreneur, I was really becoming passionate about talking about book marketing specifically. So I actually hunkered down on that one website and truly put kind of my heart and soul into it. And I wanted to make sure that there was kind of this different approach to looking at how Amazon sells books and what authors can do to get their book positioned in front of the right market. With that one, it's, it's been incredible because, you know, uh, we get about 200,000 visitors per month to the website, which is kind of, kind of freaky when you think about it. It's like, yeah. whoa, you know? Yeah. And, but when I looked at the website, I asked myself, how can I provide more for my readers? And I kept seeing that they were using this one particular software called Kindle Samurai. And the software was really clunky. It had a couple of parts that were broken and it only worked for PC. Now, mind you, we're talking about authors. Most of them are using Mac these days. So I was selling a lot of his software and I realized that I could do a better job and make something that really addressed the needs and could fit all the market. And that was where the idea of creating my first software, KDP Rocket, uh, came to mind. Dude, I just, I love it, I love it. And so KDP Rocket has become its, its own force. Um, <laughs> yeah, it you mentioned you had affiliate revenue uh, that you had, now you got KDP Rocket. Uh, you got some other ones. I don't know if you want, maybe we could save that for, for another time, but uh, we'll include all links to all these if you want to go check it out. Uh, and just the one thing I love about his site is that we both subscribe to the idea of, of if you're going to put content on the web, like make it the best content possible. You know, if you're going to write an article on whatever topic it is, make it the best article on that topic. That's right. So that you, it's the best, the best. You know, if somebody's coming to do research on how to publish on Amazon, like you want to make sure that you have. The, the, the article is gonna answer every question that they have, or if it doesn't answer every single question, you have another article that, they, that you can link to that they're gonna read that you wrote as well and just dominate that space. I mean, that's, I love his approach. I think that's why we've kind of like, just kind of clicked because like we both subscribe uh, to that idea. Um, that's awesome, man. So like, and he's got other things, like you just got back from Sri Lanka and a whole other business venture that's, that's kicking off. Um, it's just, it's fun, like it's fun uh, watching that journey. But man, I, I think, just, go ahead. 
Well, I think one big thing that, that's always been prevalent in everything we talked about in this video is that each moment was a step up. You know, I, I took from my latest project, I learned, and I applied it to something that's a little bit more challenging. So we started off with Freaking Ninjas, which is, yeah, I do like the logo though. But everything else was wrong. It was horribly put together. Uh, I failed at WordPress, that new thing to me at the time. I tried, I dabbled in SEO, that kind of blew up on my face. But I took those mistakes and then I stepped it up for the next one. And then I took the mistakes there and I stepped it up to the next one. Today in, you know, with KDP Rocket we talked about, I made a lot of mistakes. I had a terrible launch. I wasn't really a launch-minded person. I didn't even know how to do a launch. So the next one, I take those mistakes and I apply it. And I would say to anybody out there, if you're looking to start doing your own thing and start building up your platform, your product, your traffic, whatever, remember, everybody has failures. Everybody. You might not hear about them, but they're there. But the key part was that they took those failures, they learned from them, and therefore they caught, they turned it into a fail forward moment. <laughs> So that is just reason number 723 of why moving to Nashville has just been an amazing blessing. As I mentioned, I didn't know day before I moved here, Antonio from Real Men Real Style introduced us via email, and then I went to a friend's birthday party, and there he was across the, we had a little bonfire outside, he was sitting over there, and I'm like, Dude, Dave Justin, uh, and like I said, you know, just Kindlepreneur, uh, KDP Rocket, you know, he's got Book Fido, a new software tool he's got coming out. He has so many other things on the horizon, uh, and he just is crushing it. He's kind of like this, uh, this silent assassin, um, kind of going back to that ninja website that he had. But anyway, it's just been fun to get to know him, to learn more about his story, and he's just a good dude. I mean, he's just a good dude uh, that loves online marketing, that gets this space, and he is by far, uh, maybe brilliant, might be, uh, no, no, he's brilliant. I mean, he by far is brilliant. He's one of the most brilliant guys I've met. It's just as far as his execution, the way that he's been able to take a vision and build a team to get it done. Uh, and it just, uh, I'm just always amazed by those types of people. Uh, I'm sure that you've been around these types of people where you're just like, how do they do what they do? Uh, Dave is one of those guys that does that. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed learning more about him. I know that I did, and I uh, hope to bring more inspirational stories like his to you. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Give me one of these, one of these, share it with some people, share it on social, all that fun stuff. And I appreciate you checking out Wealth Hacker TV. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.